Hi, I'm Cameron from Audiolink, and today we're tackling a tricky topic. Static IP addresses and port forwarding. For those less experienced with computer networking, the technical details can be hard to grasp. But we'll bypass this by focusing on the much simpler concepts of IP addresses and port forwarding. We'll close out this tutorial with a step-by-step -step walkthrough of setting up port forwarding through a router, and also going over the concepts so the steps can be applied to any brand of router. Port forwarding can provide an improved, consistent connection when transferring audio over IP, and can help significantly reduce dropouts in programs like Source Connect. The next part of the tutorial is tailored to those who have limited knowledge of computer networking and the internet. If you are instead someone who is looking for direct information for setting up port forwarding on your network, feel free to skip ahead. And if you find this video helpful, please click like and subscribe to our channel for future content. Before we jump in, it's important to note that any situation involving internet connectivity is best applied to a wired ethernet connection. All right, let's check it out. All of our devices that connect to the internet do so through a codified system of addresses called IP addresses. Your internet modem or router at home has its own IP address. And when your computer, phone, or other devices connect to the internet, the connection is labeled with your home network's IP address from your router. This can be thought of as similar to a phone number. Your home network, then, is like a corporate phone system, with many phones connected to each other by one number, individually distinguished by their extension numbers. Your devices on your home internet connection can connect to each other in this way, as well as making outgoing calls, and receiving calls from the internet. An internet router acts much like an operator in this analogy, directing and connecting you to other IP addresses. In the most basic understanding, this is how internet connections operate. That's awesome, but how is a static IP address any different? As mentioned, each computer or device on your network is assigned an IP address. These are internal IP addresses only on our local area network, LAN, and not available as addresses on the web. While these devices can see IP addresses from each other on your local area network, their individual IP addresses can't be seen outside of your LAN. They often start with 192.168 or 10.0. These ranges of IP addresses are reserved for this purpose, so no device connected directly to the internet would use one of these. The web itself is called a WAN, Wide Area Network. The default setting for routers is to automatically assign IP addresses to each device when it connects to the local area network. This is done by a system called DHCP, Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol, which is native to your router. The keyword here is dynamic. Your device's IP addresses can and will change anytime it's restarted, for example. You need to assign a static IP address to your computer so that it is always tied to the same one if you want to use port forwarding for that machine. Both of these concepts together make for a significantly more stable internet connection. But what is port forwarding, and how does it relate to your static IP address? In addition to the IP address of each device, there are also different ports. If our IP address is like a phone number, then ports are the extension numbers in the phone system. There are many ports, 65,535 of them, and some are used for a singular specific purpose, while others have no assigned purpose at all. For example, your web browser uses port 80, and File Transfer Protocol, FTP, uses ports 20 and 21. Each standard assigned port carries a particular protocol. Special services and programs, like Source Connect, use specific ports to send and receive data. Additionally, your router can block things on all but a few specific ports. You may have heard of this, it's commonly called a firewall. The router can also route information to specific ports on different machines. This is achieved when you assign the internal IP address of your computer or device so that your router will know where to direct information to on a specific port. This, in its simplest form, is called port forwarding. 
So when your router receives a call from the WAN on your hypothetical phone system, it sends that call to all the ports and devices on the LAN. All the phones ring at once. But with port forwarding, the idea is like dialing that extension number on the phone call. Now the information, or call, is forwarded directly to the port that's been assigned. This can be a game changer for audio over IP connections. Programs like Source Connect can use port forwarding to keep a consistently stable connection. Packets of audio information sent over an internet connection will go directly to the designated computer. If you feel as though you are struggling to understand IP networking or port forwarding, some links with more information are provided in the description below. The same can be said for those who understand the concepts discussed here, but are curious to learn more in-depth information regarding port forwarding. With that covered, we're going to move on to a direct step-by-step -step tutorial for port forwarding. First, we're going to be assigning a static IP address to our computer, and then set up port forwarding on a specific protocol. The concepts here apply to all devices. However, the step-by-step -step instructions are specific to Mac OS. Depending on your computer, device, router, or internet provider, the interfaces shown here will vary, but the concept remains the same. You may have different forms or tabs to navigate, but an IP address is an IP address is an IP address all the same. During the instructions, I may make reference to Windows users, but it will not be the focus of this video. On my Mac OS computer, I'm going to open my system preferences. Here I'll find network settings. You may have seen this menu before while setting up a basic Wi-Fi or Ethernet connection. I'm going to select my Ethernet connection and then click on Advanced Settings. In the new window, we're going to ignore many of the tabs present. For what we're doing today, we only need to make changes in the TCP IP tab. This is where the DHCP, which assigns IP addresses to our machine on the local area network, can be modified to maintain a static IP address. We're going to focus on configuring IPv4. We don't have to worry about IPv6 for our purposes today. Where the window lists our IPv4 address, we're going to highlight and copy that text using Command C. Now in the drop down menu above, we'll select Manually. This means we'll be setting the IP address of the computer manually. We'll paste the IP address we copied before using Command V this time, and now we've manually assigned the IP address. Easy as that. Your subnet mask and router numbers should remain the same as they were before. If not, you can use the drop-down menu to return to DHCP, copy the numbers listed there onto a text document or write them down on paper, and then manually place those in as well. When that's complete, click OK, and then Apply. With that done, we now understand and are utilizing a static IP address. Congratulations! It wasn't so advanced after all, was it? Let's go over a quick walkthrough for those using Windows 10. I've booted up my gaming machine so that you can follow along. First select Start, then Settings, and finally Network and Internet. For those using Wi-Fi, like I am right now, select Wi-Fi, and then select your network that you're connected to. For Ethernet users, select Ethernet, then Ethernet networks you're connected to. Now, under IP Assignment, select Edit, and under Edit IP Settings, select Manual. Now we can turn on IPv4 and specify an IP address, subnet prefix, and gateway. When you're done, just click Save. Well done! With a static IP address in place, we can now assign a port on that address to forward from the LAN to the WAN. To accomplish this, we'll have to access the settings for our router. If you've set a custom name and password for your router, then you've done this before. If not, the first step is to enter your router's IP address into the address bar of your web browser. This should be the same router number we saw listed on the TCP IP page. You can copy and paste it from there. If that doesn't work, you can also check the physical hardware for your router and see if the IP address is listed there. While observing the IP address, also make note of the username and password for your router. If you have not changed these in the past, 
they will be one of many standard username password combos. In the description below is a link to a list of default username password combos for common router makes and models. When we've successfully entered the IP address into our browser, we'll be brought to a login page where we can use the username and password we made note of. We will now have access to the router settings. And the first thing we'll do is open the advanced settings panel. Just like before, there will be a lot of information to take in, but for our purposes today, we won't need to worry about most of it. This is also a reminder that my TP-Link router page may look different from your router settings. There may be different names and categories for what we're working with today, but the fundamental concepts will still apply. Follow along as best as you can. To complete the port forwarding process, we navigate to the Advanced Routing tab, or on my interface, NAT Forwarding. Here, we'll find another tab labeled Port Forwarding, which for me is called Virtual Servers. Great! To make port forwarding happen, we need to make a new rule. The rule just means the port forwarding will be set in place. For our purposes, we're setting up port forwarding for audio recording, specifically for the use of Source Connect. So our rule will assign the IP address we tied to our machine to the ports used by Source Connect, which happened to be 6000 through 6001. We set the IP address to our computer's static IP address that we set earlier. If your router asks for an external IP address, you can use 0.0.0.0. And then finally, we'll select UDP. UDP is used for audio, and TCP is used for video so we'll stick with UDP. After naming the port forwarding rule, we click Enable, and we're done. We did it. Congrats! Now, in Source Connect, on our Settings page in Pro, or in our drop-down menu in Standard, we can configure and test our port forwarding. This tutorial had a lot to take in, and if you still need more information or resources, please look to the additional information linked in the description below. Thank you for sticking with us through this, and congratulations on making it to the end. This is an important but often not discussed topic in audio recording over IP, and you're one step closer to the best audio quality you can provide and receive. If you have any further questions, feel free to contact us at info at audiolink.com. And again, if you found this video helpful, please click like and subscribe to Audiolink for more content. From all of us at Audiolink, have a great day. Goodbye.